I restarted this service, and I'm going to do the best that I can in order to convey to you what is on my heart. It is extremely disturbing to know that Satan is on an all-out attack against everyone. If you think that you're covered by the blood, that's a lie. There's no scripture that says you're covered by the blood. We have so much misinformation that has been given to us as a whole. As we started to read the scriptures before I said, cut the service, we're going to start over. I'm going to do it from my heart. I want you to know that everything I give you is actually founded on a lot of research. But the problem that I have today is that there is such a lack of commitment and a lack of desire in the hearts of men and women to serve God. I don't know if there's anything that I could say that would change that. But there's many things that I can do that will change that. And this is what I'm going to say to you. You're listening to me right now. I want you to get up, stand up in your house. And I want you to examine your heart and tell the Lord, I'm yours. And I want you to truly repent of all the wrongdoings that you have done. All the observance of these unholy days. The fact that many of you will go to church tomorrow and you'll still honor the Catholic Church. You say you're not a part of Catholicism, but you are. There's not much of a difference between Christian and Catholicism. And now the religions and ideologies are being twisted together and enlisted so there's no complete define of right and wrong. The thing that I have a problem with is we have come into this place to acknowledge and worship God. But is our heart really there? Is our mind really there? I have stood back for many years and watched how people have destroyed everything that God has tried to do for them. There was a point in time that when I began to deal with spirits, I could deal with every spirit but that that was in my own family, in my own household. And here's the problem. When you cross a line, Unless you get it right, there is no return. It's a return to sender, male rejected. You didn't have anything that you wanted to contribute. I come into this place today, although my sleep has just been a few hours and my body's exhausted, I've decided to just talk to you for a moment and then when I get a little rest, even maybe as early as this afternoon, I'll go back out and do what I intended to do. But I'm telling you right now, it's time to stand up and do what's right. <clears throat> your prayers will not be answered if your whole heart is not in serving God. Half-hearted, half-beat, half-stepped will only create more aggravation because you won't have anybody to send in the angels and change the circumstance. You will have to realize it's your walk with God, not everybody else's prayer, right. but your walk with God. You became the pawn of the enemy to destroy the thought and actual presence of God in your life. You stood up and said, I will not do that. And yet you did it. I looked out over the years of my walk with God. And I thought every time I have seen a half-hearted spirit, somebody who is not 100% engrossed in the Lord, I've only seen problem after problem after problem after problem. Never anything. Let me tell you how serious this is. Let me tell you how serious this is. You have set up your boundaries and your foundation to be inclusive of Satan and his wickedness. You allow it in your lives. You allow it in your house. You participate in it. If we were out in the field and the wicked and the paganism was happening and you would see the rituals involved into Easter, you would not get your children involved in it. I made that mistake. 
I sinned before God when I was doing it with my little boys, never knowing that the churches had lied to me, that God opposed these paganistic practices because we were never told that they were paganistic. Right. We were never told that it was involving witchcraft. The witchcraft that you're involved in is you are worshiping Satan in its entirety in every aspect of your life. Yes. You love to hear the singing. You love to see the shouting. You love to see that demonstration of falsehood, lies, and deception. You love to see that, and you're like a, a pre, an emperor sitting in a, where gladiators at, and he's going to kill the innocent people. You're like that because you don't make changes in your life. You're fine to just walk around and flop around just however, but I'm watching Satan come in to our countries everywhere, and what he's doing is he's taking captive and he's using your leadership, the leadership of our countries, to do exactly what we preached against in right. times past, right. that we would not be under a one world order, we would not be giving ourselves to a one world religion, but yet compromise is prevalent, it's everywhere, oh let's just embrace the Catholic, let's embrace the Presbyterian, let's embrace all these, we're going to be unified, we're going to help each other. The only thing you're helping each other to is a wider depth of hell. Right. You have got to listen and stand up. What are you waiting for? For some miracle? The fact that God would come into our services to me is a miracle. I don't have to see signs and wonders and miracles to believe that he is real because he's ever right, present right. in my life. That's right. right. So what you've done is you've said, well, I really don't see anything wrong with this. You are so convinced that you're going to be like Eve and you're going to partake of that sin, but you're not going to have anything touch you, certainly not even close to you. But yet the serpent said, or I guess it is serpent. Uh, he says, he's telling you, you can't do this because he knows you'll become wise. You'll become brilliant. He'll open your eyes. He's just trying to keep you from being a god. Well, Satan, you thought you won. Right, right, the people right. under the sound of my voice think they're God. Right. They think they're God because they make their own rules and they bend them accordingly until they've totally destroyed any ounce a spirituality. So as we stood back and Satan came in through our entertainment, they call it programming. It's putting in your head all the ungodly things, the things that are wicked. And what do you think that running around and watching some football game or some game of of sports that that's going to give you some kind of satisfaction you're going to sit around you're going to engross into that you're going to drink your alcohol your beer do your marijuana and everything else and what are you doing i'm just watching some tv in the afternoon no you're giving yourself deeper depth into hell that's right you look around in the room you're at right now and hell is everywhere and every individual that walks through your door. Is that a conspiracy theory? I wish it were. If it was, it would be so much easier to come out of the shadow, come out of the darkness, and come into what the Lord is expecting for us to do in this last day. Right. We have engrossed ourselves into every avenue of hell. Let me show you. Your role-playing games. 20 years ago, Harry Potter came into the scene, and I forgot how many billions of people that witchcraft has engulfed, and you've got to where you don't see anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with a little dabbling in magic. There's nothing wrong with a little of this or that. The scripture tells me, as we were reading prior, that if you have anything, if you touch it and involve yourself, that God will himself destroy you right. right and we say God's not wicked no you are but in the scripture he tells you that you're not supposed to touch the unclean thing right. so we we pray out to God but why are we not being heard 
Where is the rest of your time? Right. When I look at these stars that they get points for the number of views or, or uh, songs and so forth that they play, and you have promoted Satan in the lives of your children by this ungodly, forsaken music. We look at these people who came in innocently. You know, when Justin Bieber got started, he was just a little kid. He don't even think he was a, a teenager yet. And here he had an innocence and a pureness about him. But you see, he had a wicked mother that said he needed to be a star because something caught hold on YouTube or whatever the social media was at the time. And what did he do? He became so engrossed by the lifestyle and you can't be around dirt that you don't get dirty. Right. right. You can't do it. So he started befriending and fellowshipping the people in the industry, not realizing that the people in the industry were those that were practicing witches, warlocks, demons, Wiccan, demonic spirits. Everything clumps into one originator, and that's sin, and that's Satan. Right. And so they got involved in that until the next thing you know, Reports have said that the poor boy had been through some ritualism in the music industry. And it has been said that those guys who have tattoos on their body, those guys are the ones who were sexually messed with generally by sodomy. And these guys, to keep their manhood and prove that they're a man, put tattoos on because they feel that they are so filthy by what they participated in. And yes, those clubs and yes, those things do exist. So the more you saw a young person coming in as a clean slate, the more they tatted them up. And what they didn't realize with those tattoos and those markings bring up demonic spirits. I made the statement that when my, first, my youngest son decided to get married, his wife had tattoos and he knew that I was strictly against them. And he came to me before and he said, Mom, I want to get married. I said, oh, okay, well, when do you think I should meet her? And when are you talking about this? I'm talking about this weekend, I was gonna bring her by today. Wow, okay, I'm glad you got my personal opinion. I'm glad you respected me to ask if that was the one. You know, we, we don't think necessarily spiritually at all. So he says, I just want to warn you, she's got a few tattoos. Now, I didn't realize that when she walked into my house, I was going to see a walking billboard. And I swallowed and thought, man, that one didn't, that one got me blindsided. I didn't see that coming at all. And before he continued, or he said to me afterwards, he goes, but mom, she's got a really good heart, so please don't look at her tattoos. You would have been better off to say to me, mom, she's a walking billboard, prepare yourself. Then the best thing to say. When she came, I met her, and they had already made their mind up about getting married, and there was not anything that I personally could do, because he was grown. He was in his 20s. And I had a lot of problems with it. He could tell by my look I was against it. This is important that you follow this story all the way to the end. When she came in, it was the first time she'd ever really been in church. And she was beginning to see a change where we were as opposed to everybody else. And she started listening to everything I said about God. She was so hungry. But... My son was not. And she wanted to know everything about God. But she wasn't strong enough because you see, if you're sitting in a house where there's demonic spirits and you're not strong enough spiritually, that spirit will overcome you. And the next thing you know, you'll be possessed. Now she would be quick to say to me later in life, I have a hard time being in your presence because you're such a godly woman. And I looked at her and I said, all the more we need to do what's right. Mm -hmm. And I, w I watched her transition and it became overwhelming. Her family was greatly involved in drugs and party life and all of that that goes with it. And my daughter-in-law became more and more engrossed and I remember that they decided at one point to 
take it a little step further because you see desperation and not seeing results causes us to make very unwise decisions. And they knew that if they trafficked drugs across the state from Florida into the Dallas area, which was what her family was known for, or from Mexico into the United States, that they would make some quick cash. Uh, they'd be set, wouldn't have to go to work, wouldn't have to apply themselves, wouldn't, wouldn't have to seek God, nothing. So they had it all figured out. They were going to go for the big dollars. They'd been slinging a little bit of drugs here and there and making some money but not to what it finally became. It became hundreds of thousands of dollars. At one time, I've told that my son had in his home over a hundred thousand dollars. I didn't know what had happened, where it had come from, because you see, because of the life I lived, they didn't come around. But as I watched over a period of time, the first thing happened is those drugs took them to jail. They were tra trafficking marijuana across the border and I forgot how much it was, but it was a tremendous amount that they had put in that car. And they got pulled over and obviously got busted. Well, she took the blame. And it was horrific because at that time, we didn't know that she was pregnant with my first grandchild. So a little bit of time goes on and we get time to go to court. Before we get there, she gets busted again in the Dallas area, this time I think for cocaine supposedly her mother left it in her purse whatever the excuse was she was running two charges at the same time okay now why am i telling this i'm going to tell you exactly why i'm doing it you need to understand you're walking in a demonic world and you're doing exactly what you want to do so in the long of the run of it she lost the first baby and while waiting on trial and everything she got pregnant again this time, because she was pregnant, she lost the first baby. Because she was pregnant the second time, the powers that be were lenient and gave her a 10-year probation. And you're saying, why are you telling me this? You let those drugs and those alcohol and that behavior walk into your life and you think you can control it? She couldn't. The stuff eventually overwhelmed her and took her. Now, the reason I'm bringing this out to you is I'm saying there are those of you under the sound of my voice right now that are possessed by Satan, and he's driving you to do things you should never do. He's trying to completely destroy your life, and you're not doing nothing about it. You're not walking around your house saying, God, I'm yours. I surrender. I surrender everything about me. I withhold nothing. I'm yours, God. Forgive me of my wickedness and my conduct and my example. How am I going to win a lost world if I can't even be an example to myself or to my family? And eventually what happened is that seed was planted, but it didn't begin to possess her until after my grandson was born. See, what happened was I prayed for people for deliverance, and I'm talking about real deliverance, not some phoniness. I've seen God strike out the devil and right there in services, see people to walk free and be free. But what was happening was I couldn't see that in my daughter-in-law. I couldn't understand how come they didn't come to church. I didn't understand the conviction was so much that they couldn't go. You see, you find your safety zone in your Sunday church where nobody's going to preach about nothing. They're going to give you good talks about your self-esteem and your narcissistic attitude, but they're not going to tell you it's time to repent and get right with God and clean out your life. Right. So we decided to take my, my 10, 12 kids at that time uh, to a movie. It was some simple thing. I can't remember. That's been so many years ago. And we made arrangements because my grandson was the youngest, and we felt like that even though he probably wouldn't enjoy it, probably wouldn't understand it, we would still be inclusive. So I made the arrangements and I set the time. I'm going to tell you where possession took place. And I didn't even see it. I knew it, but I didn't understand what was going on. So the next thing happens 
is that she begins to get upset and enraged with me and she gets my son she's lying to my son and my son's getting upset and he's saying to me mom you're trying to exclude our kid I said I never did I told you what time I'm sitting in this parking lot everybody's waiting on you and this went on in her action for about 30 45 minutes and then the next thing I know all of a sudden here comes cussing me and doing all kinds of evil against me I finally just said, they said, we're not bringing him. And I said, well, you're the one who withheld him from coming. We sat here and waited on you. And for three solid days, this woman cursed me and called me out for three solid days. It got to where I couldn't even look at the phone. She had to text ping, 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 ping. She just is ripping me apart. And I'm looking at it and I'm not realizing that Satan's making one last battle attempt to destroy my family. I'm, I'm too busy involved with all of this that's going on to see what was really going on down here. And I never could feel the liberty to step up to her and address that spirit. And the reason I couldn't, I'm going to tell you why, because it was revealed to me this last week or two. When she did that, she touched God's anointed. She went against God's anointed and God does not have tolerance for that. He will give you over to a reprobate mind to believe a lie and be damned. That's exactly what he will do because you had not a love for the truth and you didn't uh, honor those that were sent to you in, in this testimony. So here it is. On that three day, I never realized how deep into sin Satan snatched her soul and went, Shoo! and the only way that she could get back or even come to God is if I prayed for her after she had asked for forgiveness. First of the Lord, of me, and I could have prayed for her and God would have delivered her. But you see, those demons had rooted deep into where now she's doing all kinds of crazy stuff, insane stuff. She went from a beautiful young woman, regardless of the tats, she went from a clean-hearted good girl to being so wicked involved in everything that possesses. Partying life possesses. Drinking possesses. Being involved in drugs possesses. Getting involved in sex outside of marriage possesses. Being involved in any illicit behavior possesses. And the thing is, you have to want to come out of the pit. Right. I didn't understand it. And I took the blame time and time and time again. Why didn't I? Why didn't I? And many times I would go and pray for people and God would set them free immediately. It was just boom, boom, boom. And there was no effort. There wasn't a bunch of screaming, praying, and tag and turn and whatever. It was simply the spirit of God overwhelmed that. And time went on. And she kept making herself more distance and distance. And then she decided she was going to latch on as a friend to my other daughter-in-law. My point is, you see, one seed was planted by the actions that would destroy many on a ripple effect. You see, they don't see it's wrong because they are living what is wrong. Right. You don't see what's wrong if you're living in it. It looks like it's right to you, but it's not. It appears to be something you could embrace and know that it was okay, but it's not. So years past, my grandson is nine years old. And that's when he said to me, and I knew that she had sealed the deal. He said, laying up between me and his dad, Grandma, what's a psychopath? And I began to tell him. <clears throat> he looked puzzled at me. He said, but Grandma, you're not a psychopath. I said, well, thank you. Why would you say that? Well, the reason grandma said that mom says we can't go see you, grandma, is because you're a psychopath. And because of that, she has told me that you were this way all of my life. And I said, okay. But she, he says, I've come to realize it's not you that's a psychopath. It's my mom. My mom is a psychopath. Well, later I found out why he said that. At the time, I didn't know. She has now her claws into his soul. 
and everything around her she's going to bring in. Why? Because she's got a cool personality. She's funny. She's a lot of fun. Hello? Satan's not dull, boring, or scary. It says he comes to you as like an angel of light. That's what it says. So this demonic possession took complete control. I never knew that it was going to do what it ended up doing. The battle zone became more and more fierce until, as many of you know, she decided to come here 10 days before she killed my son. And it all started back there with dabbling, experimenting, not being able to tell your friends, I don't want any part of that walking out of the room. Why do you want to sit there and get high with the marijuana steam and smoke going on? Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just get up and walk out the door and say, I'm done? Now that just doesn't happen to people like my daughter-in-law. Let me give you a more current story. People got down here to help us two years ago or to come and help with putting the school together. And for the most part, it was a battle all the way. But when my son was killed, I decided to give 100% of what I was doing for the school and the cause of God. Well, a young woman came down with her two children. And I knew from the get-go that she was not to be with one of the young men in my church because I knew there was no purity and there was so much wicked inside of her. She was a professional apostolic Pentecostal which has no fault or no error in their life because they've got the one God message but they talk about two gods. Okay. It's crazy. But she started turmoil and flipping things up, even to attack her husband and her children, and I would have to call her out. She was determined to cause chaos. This went on for about two years, even to the point that she was abusive with her children. And I told her, had we been in the United States, I would report her and have them pick them up because she was that abusive. And they had witnesses after witnesses. Even her own testimony to us was very condemning of her actions and what she had been doing. What had happened? She had become demon-possessed. You see, when you're involved in demonic spirit, you don't realize that you are possessed by that spirit. You think you're just fine. And so the power of God came in and called her out for a number of things, but this was like the last straw called her out, and cursed her to hell. She never felt God. I don't believe she ever felt God because she was so much from the very beginning, she hated me and this ministry and tried to destroy it from the inside. I told her that when God moves forward, she could not go with us because I could not allow that impurity of thought, heart, mind, and soul to be involved in this congregation. And so miraculously, she is out of the picture. And I am so, so thankful. You don't know how thankful I am. Why didn't you pray for that woman? I couldn't. My hands were tied. You see, when you come against the anointed of God, which happens to be me, and you make your attacks and your statements of unkindness and ugliness, God immediately says, Doom. One touch of his finger and your life spins out of control because you didn't keep your focus. You see, there's a constant battle going on right now for your soul. There's a constant battle to destroy you, and you think that you got it all right. You don't. I've told you, because you break the commandments of God, you don't got it right at all. I've told you, if you put any other God before Adonai, Yahweh, you're obliterating his purpose. This world was not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to say that again. Get upset, hang up, turn up. I don't care. But I'm going to tell you, you were not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. Tell it. God does not believe in human sacrifice. That's right. He would not have sacrificed his, quote, son for the sins of my life. When in fact, I think the next section of scripture, Stacy, that I think is in um, Jeremiah, will tell you that you will not be accountable for another man's sins. 
Neither was Jesus accountable for yours. Your plan of salvation is to keep the other deities out of your life. So we read for me this next section, I think. Jeremiah 16 and 10. And it shall come to pass when the... Am I going? Coming up. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt shew this people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore thou hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Now think about it. You won't take responsibility for your sin because you refuse to repent. You're so full of self and pride. And this is what it says it will be. More lovers of self than lovers of God. Go ahead. And thou shalt say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken me. Because your fathers have forsaken me. Said the Lord, and have walked after other gods. Walked after other gods. He will not hear you. And have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me. So you went in on Easter, and you worship not God. It was not to do with the the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You did not go in to worship God on a Sunday because he don't have church on Sunday. He's out of attendance. Okay. And have not kept my law. And you have done worse than your fathers. For behold, you walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart that they may not hearken unto me. Therefore will I cast you out of this land into the land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not shew you favor. It's a greater accountability today than it was years ago. Because we have the internet at our disposal, and all we have to do is type in the origin of a particular holiday, and you'll find every bit of it is stooped in occultism. Now I want to go back here. To the second one, uh, 16 and 11. Then shall thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me. Because you forsook him. You picked up other gods. You violated the first commandment. You said, I don't need God. I've got Jesus. There is no way that you could say, You don't need God. That's you right. have Jesus. Jesus is not a substitute, and he's not God. That's and so, right. therefore, you're praying and calling upon the name of of incantations and a mantra when you say, in Jesus' name. It's nothing in Jesus' name. That's right. It's all in Adonai. That's it right. is not in Jesus' name. You will not see the power of God move whenever that happens. Amen. These incidents that may uh, somehow equate to what appears to be a miracle is just Satan releasing and grabbing. That's releasing right. and grabbing. Right. Catch and release. And have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them. I didn't worship. Okay, we're talking about on Easter Sunday, according to all denominations. Okay, this is where I'm going to come in on this. And when we're supposed to be talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have the Messiah with Pentecostals of Alexander charging you to watch that resurrection. Right. Every single person, even if you, it's a pay for view. Making thousands of dollars off of an Easter Messiah program. Right. He is not the Messiah. Right. He is not the Messiah. The deliverer. Right. The deliverer of our soul is our Lord God Almighty Adonai. Right. Right. It is not Jesus. He cannot take your sins away. Right. It's going to keep saying he can't do it. Right. Because there's not going to be a sacrifice made for another man's sins. You have done worse than your fathers. For behold, ye walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart. That they may not hearken unto me. I don't even know if I look through this real quick, Stacy. Uh, I don't know if I read it or you read it, but where it says that a man will be held accountable for their own sins. I don't know if I brought that print out or not. You are held accountable for what you do. Accountability brings responsiveness. 
And in the responsiveness, that means it brings repentance. And true repentance, you find yourself weeping at the feet of the Lord, asking his forgiveness. You know, when things have gone really bad in my life, I, I find myself crying and crying out to the Lord, what have I done to offend you? Is it in that one? Uh, Exodus chapter 20. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before None, me. not Muhammad, not any other religious entity. But you'll have no other. That means none. That means you're not going to celebrate Tammuz. You're not going to celebrate Sol Invictus. Right. You're not going to celebrate Cupid and Stupid or Eros. You see what I'm telling you? You won't be involved in that because it will know. you will know it's offensive to God. That's right. Go ahead. You shall not make yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of your father upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Okay, that's your first scriptures and commandments, but there is one and I may have to bring it back. Isaiah 42 and 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Okay, let's look at that a minute. You moved Easter bunnies into your churches. The fertility goddess. And while you were in there doing your Easter egg hunts and you went to go get your happy new clothes, etc., each action that you did came against God even greater. That's right. And you want to tell me you just loved that day when God curses it? I, again, I don't know that I got, brought these scriptures down here yet. Because she's going through them. And, and in it, it tells us that God will not hold another responsible for your sin. Um, I think, let's try. Did we go to Jeremiah 6? That may be where it's at. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt shew this people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath the Lord pronounced all the great evil against us? Or what? Our iniquity. Or what is our iniquity? You got it. Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord? I don't doubt that you don't love the Lord. You're just not taught. You have stupid men and women standing before you leading you into occultism and you just go walking along like it's okay because you really like them they're really charismatic you really like how they preach how much energy it gives but today i read a, a text or a, a post on facebook and it grieved my heart for this man has practiced witchcraft in the pulpit magic in the pulpit and now here he is calling out to people to pray drastically because his wife may die on him. And I've said in this place and I've said to you, don't participate in magic and witchcraft. Don't do it. And when you go and you do it, knowing the scripture is against magic and witchcraft, then you begin to see nothing wrong with anything anymore. So now we're being told that you can't refer to people as a he or a she, you can't refer to them as a gender of any sort because to do that is offensive. I'm offended that you don't want to allow me to be the female that God created me to be. Right. And everybody's not satisfied because of all the wickedness. Okay, go, go on. Then, the, then shalt thou say unto them, because you, your fathers have forsaken me, said the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. Ye have done worse than your fathers, for behold, ye walk every one after the imagination of his heart, that they may not hearken unto me. Therefore I will cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not. 
neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve gods day and night, where I will not shew you favor. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get to the house and find the other sheet of paper that tells you this. It is in the Old Testament, and I'll get it, and I'll, like I said, post it or send it or whatever. The point I'm getting at is you are dying of diseases, and your eternal damnation is secure. That's what you made sure you did. You won't do the research. You want to debate and argue if there's a God or there's not a God. You want to debate and argue if that's right or if you're making more out of it. Anytime a demon tells you, oh, it's not that bad, I would suggest you stop being company with them. Because if you fall for that line, you're going to fall for every line, and you're going to be entrapped into wickedness. Now, why am I bringing this out to you? Because I know that you are in that situation where you need deliverance. And there is not a preacher one that you know who has the power with God to see your deliverance. There's not one person. And the sad part about it is you're satisfied. That's what Satan does. You feel so secure in your salvation. But when you lay down at light and you know that you have offended God, do you still feel that secure in your salvation? Today may not have gone as I plan. May not have conveyed my whole entire thought the reason was was because I was going to show all of this to you in action and prove to you how powerful God is and I will still do that there's only one slight problem I'm going to need a few more hours of sleep <laughs> so as I close and this is for real so you don't have to worry about me going right back on I don't think uh I want you to examine your heart and go on YouTube, subscribe, click on the notification bell. And when we go out of these doors in order to reach out to the outside world, we are going to go live and won't be sitting in here where this place is set up, maybe bouncing back and forth. But I am at one point in time going to call for God to deliver you wherever you are. I might allow that to come live online where your request and so forth can be made known, but I will investigate that more further as I've watched how the music you play is destroying your mind and your faith and your confidence in God it's appalling all of these artists have given themselves over to the power of Satan to become wealthy and to become known as a celebrity they really seek after that great attention and yet you buy their stuff, you know, on iTunes, Spotify, I guess Spotify sells, I don't know, and, and everything around you. And then not only do you listen to their music, you get on the TV and any form of media and you watch about witchcraft and destruction and death and murder. And you are so pumped up because that spirit inside of you is fed, fed something that it shouldn't have been involved with in the first place. I may not have been able to bring this out as much as I would have liked to, but I reassure you that when rest has come to my body, it's going to be a double punch, proving God is real. Right. So I ask you to stop being stubborn. This is your eternal salvation. Jesus Christ did not die for your sins. And when I come back on, I'm going to have those scriptures. So just remind me to get them. I'm pretty sure it's on my computer. I didn't print it out. But I'm going to have it, and I'm going to prove to you Jesus Christ was not the Savior of the world, and he did not die for your sins. And when you take that one major element out of your life and the fact that he did not raise from the dead, nor was he born of a virgin, your entire Christian faith will be destroyed because you built it on the sand and not on the solid rock. If you built it on the rock of the word and applied it, then you won't allow anything to destroy that. That's right. I can't change what you have determined in your heart to do. Here I said I was going to give you the scripture that supports why Jesus did not die for your sins. Again, Jesus did not die for your sins. It does not, the blood does not cover your sins. Right. There is scripture that states this, 
And if when you look at it, you're going to look at two things, and this is especially for agnostic and atheistic individuals. God did not put his son to a wicked death. That's right. He never did that. Now, do I doubt that there was a crucifixion? Possibly. There was a lot of crucifixions going on about that time. But the point is, there has only been one redeemer of mankind. Only one redeemer of mankind. Only one that you could turn to for forgiveness. Only one. And his name is not Jesus. That's right. That's right. Read the scripture, chapter and verse. Ezekiel 18 and 19. Ezekiel 18, 19. Yet you say, why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Because the son has done what is lawful and right and has kept all my statutes and observed them, ye shall surely live. Okay, there goes your generational curse. That's right. If you think that you have to do the same things your family has done, the answer is no. You are held accountable for yourself only. And it said that the son, go back and read that again. Why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Because the son has done what is lawful and right and has kept all my statutes. If the son was Jesus Christ and he did all that was lawful and right, he would have never died for your That's sins. That's right. 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 <laughs> Ezekiel 18 and 20. The soul who sins shall die. The one who sins, the one who breaks the commandments of God, the right. ones that said there is not only one God, his name is Adonai, right. Yahweh, Elohim. His name is not Jesus. That's right. That is not even a name that's translatable by Bible degrees. That's something that was concocted. That was not his name. Right. And that is not the savior of mankind. The soul who sins shall die. The one who sins. You got up. You acknowledge another God on your Easter Sunday. You acknowledge another God on every other holiday. You acknowledge him and therefore you and you alone are held accountable. Not everybody else. Right. You're the one who spit in the face of God. Right. right. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. You are not accountable for another person's sins. It is the requirement of that individual in order to ask God for forgiveness. And then let's go another step further. You can go ahead and debate whether Sunday or Saturday is a day you should worship. You can debate that, but when it's all said and done and we're standing before the king and the king says, why did you follow after Babylon? Why did you embrace the Catholic church? Why did you break my commandments? Right. And your statement's going to be is things changed or that's not how I perceived it. That's not what I was taught. It is not a matter of what you were taught. It's what you know. And that knowledge comes from being investigative on what you believe. Right. right. The righteousness of the righteous shall righteousness. be upon himself. Righteousness. Then I'm telling you Jesus Christ never had to die for your sins. Never, ever, ever have to die for your sins. You're the one who's in your iniquity right now. And you think just because you were baptized, you profess to speak in tongues. Let me tell you something. I heard a guy the other day who I was praying for. He hugged me and he started speaking in tongues. Now this man isn't even living halfway right. So all this tongue speaking that you hear in your churches, you better question that sound. You better question those actions. If you are held accountable for what you have done, you have brought in the power of hell into your life and you keep bringing it. And then on Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon, you're going to go to that same temple, unholy temple that is not even of God. You're going to go against God again tomorrow because he said in the fourth commandment and in some Bibles it's the third, not to forget the Sabbath. And that is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. You are worshiping the sun god on Sunday. Right, right. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. The wickedness, your practices, your behavior, your lackadaisical spirit of non-concern, that is on you. 
That is your damnation. And this world is coming after you. The demons are going to come on after you like crazy because you've opened up your heart and your spirit to receive the legions that will possess you. But if a wicked man turns from all his sins, which he has committed, keeps all my statutes. All my statutes. And does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. What is the plan of salvation? Repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and refilling the Holy Ghost? The answer is no. That's not the plan of salvation. You don't have to run around here with your feeble older family member trying to get them baptized just so they can slip through the pearly gates. It ain't going to happen. Your prayers will not leave the room in which you're in. Go back and read that last paragraph or two. The soul, Ezekiel chapter 20, the soul who sins shall die. The, son, the soul who sins. You are walking, talking spiritual death. You are walking in that right now. You have no peace of mind, no liberty. You have nothing when it comes to your relationship with God because you keep being like a magnet and drawing every demon wickedness into you. That's right. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. So what it's saying is this, basically, that... If you walk in righteous and keep his commandments, not the ones that was made after the fact, but the commandments of God, if you walk in that and live that and go by that Ten Commandments, it doesn't say you've got to go be baptized in order to be saved. It says you'll be saved by walking in this. But if a wicked man turns from all his sins, which he has committed, keeps my statutes and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live and not die. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him. Look how beautiful this is. Because the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. Okay, what's he saying? If you make that change and you change your whole mind and your life and your, percep your percepti perception, that you're going to be able to repent and live. When you come out there and people are saying to you, well, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. Ask your question. How spiritual are you? Hmm. Whenever you can make thousands and thousands of dollars over the Messiah play, and you're going to market your Messiah play for the benefit of what? Shouldn't it be if the gospel was so freely given, you should not charge for something of this nature? Right. Oh, but I've got to pay my, my speakers. I've got to pay overhead, blah, 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 blah. Use another way. I have not charged anybody for giving them the gospel. God gave it to me, and I'm so freely giving it to you. Right. So you have him saying, if you're wicked, and if you repent and you change and stop practicing those, and embrace the commandments, then you're considered the righteous. And in that, you'll be made strong and live forever. Ezekiel 18 and 24. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to the abominations of that wicked man does, shall he live? Okay, so these preachers running around and drinking wine, wine coolers, all kinds of alcoholic beverages. So we're, we're upholding the principles of God, correct? Because if I'm not mistaken, all things that call alter states of consciousness are possession. Right. And then you become possessed and do things you would not normally do. And you welcome those. You sit down and you have your communion and you want your wine. You want to have the little beverage. You know, first of all, we do Passover far different than anybody ever. And I thank God that he gave me the knowledge of the Passover. This is a scripture that talks about if you partake in something that's not right, you sit down and you had Last Supper. Stop and think what the Christian term is. Uh, the Last Supper. And you said, I'm eating the blood, drinking the blood of Jesus Christ. Scripture says not to drink the blood, not right. to eat the blood, and right. yet you're doing the blood. Right. right, That's right. And it says, and this is the bread which is taken, is my body. So you became a cannibalist? 
You partook of eating flesh because you see in the Catholic religion, that wafer, that cracker becomes the actual literal flesh of Jesus Christ. So you are now a born again cannibal paganistic demon and you're sharing your gospel Come everywhere. On. Come on. All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness. So the, the sin won't be remembered because of all the righteousness. And that's going to be the sealing of your salvation. Go ahead. Because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed, because of them he shall die. So that person, you, sitting right there, practicing this stuff and promoting it on your social medias, showing what a gay old time you had. I'm surprised I can use that word today because I think that what in my life was gay, was happy and exhilarated excitement is now your twisted piece of mess. They should have just called him a, a pretzel because they're all twisted. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, it is not my way which is fair, and your ways which are not fair. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity in which he has done that he dies. Okay, let me back up a second. So a person comes into the church, and we tell them that Easter is pagan. Go look it up, check it out, uh, watch the videos, or numerous. And they say they believe it. But in their heart, they don't believe it. Right. And in their heart, the iniquity, the sin is still there. So therefore, there is no repentance that takes place. And that person, it doesn't matter. The devil speaks in tongues. He don't just speak English. Right. When you've got these preachers coming around, I challenge you. Turn your phone on when they're speaking in their dialect. And you'll find out it is not tongues of God. The Bible tells us that there's going to be this because there's other languages around the world. Now, when I speak in tongues, I don't speak in tongues. I speak in languages. And obviously, you can tell the ma massive difference. But it says, if you partake in this, so you have already doomed your soul. Give me that last paragraph a minute. When a righteous man turn away from his righteousness. So here a person comes to church. And Julian, this is really more of a substantial uh, confirmation when people have come to my church there's only one of two ways they can walk they're either going to grow in God or walk out the door there's never a sitting on the church pew right. it's not going to happen because what I teach is so strong that you're going to get up and you can find out what somebody is really about so a person comes to my church their family embraces the fact that these holidays are, are unholy days and they've embraced this and now, here they come, throwing out their iniquity, throwing out their trash at everybody in the church. Mm -hmm. And then what do we have? That sin that has taken root in their heart continues to grow. And just like some barnacle that gets a hold of a vessel and won't let it go and just destroys it, right. those things are destroying you, and you will not make it. And he's going to make sure that you can't find your way back because you did not acknowledge him in the first place, nor honor him. Ezekiel eighteen twenty seven. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness which he committed and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions which he committed. It says it's turn away, that's repent. Yes. So don't be a part of those. He shall surely live and not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not fair. And how, O house of Israel, it is not my ways which are fair, fair, and your ways which are not fair. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, said the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, so that the iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from all from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Oh, I like that. Get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. When you start throwing out the paganistic practices and, and the demonic worship or involvement, you're going to see everything starts getting cleaned up. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one of who dies, said the Lord God. 
So God did not send Jesus to the cross to die for your sins. Right. Wouldn't that be absolutely insane? Jesus died several thousands of years ago. You had not yet been born. So you want to say there not should be more sacrifices than Jesus? Maybe that's what you're saying because you were born many years after. You're walking by faith, not by what you understand and not by the word of God. So I told you we would share those scriptures with you. I don't know if you had those up on the screen, Barry. But I want you to realize what you are doing right now is setting your eternal security, either serving God or going into eternal damnation. Thank you. God bless.